on today's show. Figure painting, Ben Davis spent the week with us showing us how he does all his great figure painting, um, some great tips and tricks. We've got around about three hours of footage to share with you. Um, so we've got part one of that on, uh, up on the site this week and then we'll be making our way through as fast as I can edit it. Weathering in the armour, yeah, cracking on with the Sherman now. Some uh, great weathering effects using pigments uh, and uh, oil paints, so we'll be looking at those. Winning with the Jag, carrying on with the Kitty Hawk Jaguar. Basically, I've beaten it into submission now, so we're just getting on with the painting. Uh, and we're starting with the actual winter camo look, uh, the grey with white. Had a few troubles with the airbrush, so we'll be covering that live on today's show. Destroy my tank, yes, we've been at it again. This week, we've been putting the 116th RC Tiger up against John Buller's uh, 135th scale uh, KB1. Um, funnily enough, the Tiger one. Kit reviews went up yesterday, so we'll have a quick recap of that. We have the Italeri Wessex, uh, which is a rebox of the early type, which is a very nice kit. But we have the lovely looking Kitty Hawk 132nd F86 Sabre Dog. Plus all the other news and gossip. Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Great week this week. Uh, as a lot of you know, I've been on obviously the site and with the social media, Facebook and things like that. We had Ben Davis down. Now, little Ben Davis, only a young lad, he is a massive talent. And if he carries on the way he's going with his modelling, he's going to be a real master modeler in the future and a real star of the hobby, I should think. He came down to show us about figure painting. I have not got a clue about it. I don't do figure painting. I, till now, used to hate it with a vengeance. Um, so that's why I had pilot figures they had masks on visors down piece of cake okay but there is a real art form to it so ben basically came down uh, monday tuesday uh, and i filmed him throughout monday and tuesday showing all the different techniques and how he goes about it now there is loads to this one we we actually recorded around about three and a half hours of footage in total uh, which doesn't sound a lot, but that was recording obviously over um, sort of two complete days, editing it down to that. So what we're going to do is basically going to put up part one, which is up on the site now, okay? And then uh, what we'll do next week when I get around finish it, edit it, a few little bits to do, that will go up on Tuesday next week as well. And then there's going to be an informal where me and him sat down um, Tuesday morning and I had a go at figure painting as well which I did these two guys, he just did some other ones which aren't that good to be honest. Uh, <laughs> only joking Ben, uh, and showed me. And we had a real sort of informal sort of question and answer thing. I asked him some questions uh, and then he asked me a few and everything else like that. It's about an hour and a half long. Um, it's a bit like our Tuesday live show with just me and him sat here. But we got an overall with me and him sat there and then close ups and I'll edit it in so you can see us as we're talking and working and how we do it. Obviously in my way slightly different to his as well and you can see the different techniques and ways of doing it. But as I said, he shows us on the larger bus figures as well, exactly how he does his eyes, his skin tones, the different techniques, tips and tricks to doing it all. So let's have a quick look. Now, so all I'm doing, you do it almost like a dab in motion, so you dab it out. See, normally I do this a lot closer to myself so I can see it, but I'm just gonna try and show you the best I can. So at the moment I sort of like a line, so I just need to sort of go around a bit, fill it out. Obviously you want to leave some of the eye colour in there. Depends on how, you know, in what situation you want to do him in. If he's doing it in bright sunshine, obviously the pupil is going to be very small. If he's in the sort of dark, obviously it's all nature, so obviously dark, the pupil is going to be bigger. But obviously you don't want it to be too small because it just looks too odd. Okay, so come back in, probably got tad too much on here but just touch it in right so you'll generally find that one eye will probably be better than the other eye all right it's nothing to, to worry about if it comes with practice so I mean straight away you can probably see that this side's got a bit of a slot around it the shape's not quite there this one's okay but it's got the, the point in there quite well Okay, but obviously it just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of refinement. I'm sort of doing this quite quickly just to sort of show you. Um, let's try and... What you want to try and do is you want to try and avoid you're obviously trying to come back with the blue because obviously you're going to muck it up again. So you're just sort of trying to go with it, okay? But I mean, I'm going to go with that one for now just because, you know, uh, it's just a demonstration. You get the idea, okay? But you get the idea of what we're going for all. We're going for the thing, come a bit closer out. So you've got the guys' whites in there now. Uh, obviously got the bits and pieces in there. 
Okay, there's bits and pieces that we can do there, so we're going to start going back now. Okay, um, we'll just wait for, to be honest, because it's fairly hot under these studio lights, the acrylics are obviously drying a lot quicker than they normally do at home. Okay, so obviously be aware of that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to just pop a bit of thinner and just sort of salvage the last bits of this brown mix that I had before. Just probably not going to have an awful lot, but just to sort of start it off. Probably actually going to have to mix up a, a new set now. So if I just take the, it's the same colours again, so I'm just taking two sets of the of the dark of the uh, beige red, okay, with a tad of the uh, the black red, make that sort of purpley colour. I'm just taking a tad of this uh, colour just here, just to mix it up. Get that sort of rough same colour. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have to be exactly different because obviously, not everyone's the same. Just do that in there. Just knock it off on the pad at the front here. Just get rid of most of it. Get a nice clean brush. Come on in. So bring him back again. So we'll stop. Obviously, I did the uh, the bottoms first last time, but we'll just come in again. So this has got quite good um, eye moulding on here. So I can see where it is. I can bring it in, I can touch it in. Doesn't matter if you go too much, you can always come back with a different colour and colour over the top, but it's just to get that initial shading. Okay, come back again, get some more paint. Come back in again with this guy. Just looking for where the the eye shape goes. Come across the top. Back fill around the top again. This sort of shades it out so a bit thin at the top there, so we'll just come back in again. Just do that. Just gonna paint the whole top of this just so they're both the same. Obviously, just be careful what you're doing with the eye. Don't want to ruin all your work at the last minute. Okay, so it looks a bit odd there, but start to cut back the top of the eye. I can just clean the brush off now. Okay, I can just come straight in with the uh, the beige red again, which is the standard, um, the base colour. Okay, back in, and we'll just start working around the bottoms. Okay. So it's, this mix is a tad thinner than it was before, uh, when we did the base coat, but not to worry. Okay, so we're just gonna find the bottom of the eye. Sort of do that sort of, that sort of motion, just sort of working it, especially when it's got a thin mix. It's okay because you can get a little bit more control with what you're gonna do with the with the bristles rather than just trying to swipe it across. Just take it slowly and then just backfill across like that. As you see what we're doing there, it refines the eye a bit more. Okay, come in again, reload the brush. Okay, and we're back in, so you can flip it over again. Well, I can see where the eye, obviously you can't really see it on the camera where the eye moulding is, but I can see it here. Probably cut that in a bit too thin, okay. But obviously what you can do is you can then sort of work it in, so you can say, the guy's squinting, so obviously we've now done that one quite thin. Okay, so we just what we'll do is we'll just pop back the other one because I haven't pr protected this, which is what I should have done. So I can't really go back and wipe it off. So I'll just go with the mistake I've made, adapt it, which is all what figure painting is about. So you make a mistake, you can say, you know, drum maker. Obviously, if it's a massive mistake, obviously you need to try and do something about it. But that it's now got that sort of squinting look. Okay, um, which has actually come out quite a lot better. So, so probably this this shadow area here probably just needs a little bit of refinement at the top, but it's okay for now. All right, so I'll let that all dry off. Okay. So I don't think you can tell the difference. Mine's probably better than his. Oh, anyway, so there you go. That was Ben. 
And um, as I say, he's got amazing work with it all. There's lots of it to come up, but a big, big thank you for him for traveling down. Obviously he did the Alton show on the Saturday. Uh, then he was he arrived down here on Sunday afternoon. And then finally he made the long old trip back home, bless him, um, which is a good old, probably six hour drive, I should think, five or six hour drive back to his um, on Wednesday morning after the live show. So on Monday, we actually had, what do we do Monday? the legs part up on the actual uh, Sherman the track is undone so I want to show you guys how you actually pin it all together loads of fun with this one really really enjoying it um, you're sort of catching up with me because obviously I didn't get any done this week but definitely um, enjoying it it's one of those builds where quite frankly the more I'm doing it the more I'm getting into armor in a big old way and I sort of have plans now in my head of everything what we're doing we're using pigments and oils on this one which is say something I traditionally don't use tend to use the clay washes things like that um, rather than uh, pigments and oils but really am enjoying it so at the moment you might be able to see it's looking rusty at the moment but this is sort of the base color before I start going in the muds and we start weathering it up that's why I haven't done the upper hole yet and all those bits. We've got a massive load of stowage to go on here as well, so we're going to be cracking on with that one actually later today, probably, uh, to get all those painted up and start to worry, think about fitting them, how they're going to go, and really pushing on with this build. So, really, really enjoying it. Let's just have a look. Pick up these nice little, looks like a scratched, worn edge on this top. Okay, but actually, that is nothing more than the actual grey paint. Okay, so we're just going to take a little bit more okay we have to be a slightly different here because we have studio lights and it dries everything out extremely quick but just make sure you get everything off your brush okay and then you can sort of go around elsewhere but as I said to start with it's very light okay then as things start to start to dry off you can Perhaps approach it a little bit more aggressively. But hopefully you can see there on the numbers the way they're starting to pop out now and things like that. And also the texture of the, the weld lines and all those areas stood start to now pop out, come to life. So we're going to start up around the ring. Okay, and then we'll start to make our way around the rest of the model. But it's one of those things, don't get carried away, load up your brush and just think, right, we're going to pile in here. Because otherwise that's when things are going to slightly go awry, okay? So just take your time with it, keep it nice and easy. And we're just going to work this scratch, this line down here. Okay. And the idea is you're going to get caught slightly on the texture of the paint as well. Hopefully you can see that just a little bit in there. Okay, and then when you get to other areas, like we've got down in here, on the bogies, it should work just as well as everywhere else, okay. So again, we're just going to run it real. And obviously a lot of this under here, you're gonna lose in pigments uh, and washes and all those things that we're gonna do with these a little bit later on. Okay. But you could spend a good couple of minutes doing each particular area. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on this and then we'll zip off and I'll do loads of it off camera so you're not being bored to death, all right? But if we just do down on the back here on these grills, on these bolts, and all these good areas down on the back here, hopefully you'll see it all pop and start to come to life. Okay, so just keeping you even. Then you can come across and do all your other bits. See, I'm definitely turning to the dark side now. Absolutely loving this, and I must admit, I'm looking forward to cracking on with the Bradley next. It's got the Bradley over there, which I'm pretty sure is gonna win the next video build. So we're looking forward to that one.
Uh, Tuesday we say we had the live show, so we had obviously Ben with us, Sid, the normal chaos that goes on. Had a few technical issues, which actually I've watched the recording, don't seem so bad on the recording that it did for our live one. Haven't got a clue. Um, it's one of those things. Don't forget, we're streaming live over the internet. It could be us, it could be somewhere else, it could be between uh, Steve, because he's joined us as well, uh, and everything else like that. So it's one of those things, it's totally out of our control. We're doing this stuff, I can work it all out. When we're streaming live, it, we don't. So we did have a couple of little coughs all the way through, but I'm glad to see that Steve um, carried on his unique cooking tips that he gives out when we're um, off air. <laughs> but lots and lots of fun, loads of gaps and all the rest of it. If you haven't seen us and you want to watch it and you're a non-member, don't forget, just pop over to our YouTube page uh, and you can see them down there. They're always free to air. I usually put them up the week afterwards, uh, but last week's is up already because we had such a good fun with it as we move through. Wednesday, Jaguar. Um, as I say, no, that's not primer. This is actually the gray coat. It has a lighter one because I'm going to be doing it as the snow cat. So it's actually going to have white camo, going to be wraparound camo over this one. So it's the lighter gray uh, over this one instead of the darker gray. Um, <sighs> nightmares still continue. Not really. This time it was a little bit my own fault and the airbrush started to play up and everything else. And it's one of those good examples when people say to me about, I've cleaned out my airbrush, I know it's clean and it's still not working. I get this question a lot and I always say, restrip it, do it again. This is why. And this is one of those things a lot of people ask me about, so it's quite handy, I can show you. Okay, so as you can see, just nothing's really coming out. It's, you know, no matter what pressure, it is a little bit, but not a lot. What that actually is telling you is that you've got a blockage down by the needle end of your actual airbrush and everything else. So if we give you a quick strip clean just to show, because I do think these are very relevant in uh, today's modeling, because let's face it, we all get it. I've got a normal airbrush cleaner, okay, and I've got some thinners. So to start with, I'm gonna pop a little bit of thinners in here. All right, I've got my little cleaning brush, and all we're gonna do, is gonna give it all a white round down in this section down in here, okay? And I'm not gonna try and blow it through, because if you blow it through, you can have problems. So I've got here my little dump pot, so, and this is called a dump pot for a very good reason, because that's where I dump all my horrible paint. When it gets a bit thick, I grab it and chuck it in the bin. Okay, we might need that again in a minute. I'm just gonna grab a little bit more. <coughs> okay, we're just gonna give a quick wipe around the top here. All right, and then we're gonna do a very quick disassemble. So we just take the front off. Okay, we can have a look, see what's going around the front. Now being careful with the needle, because obviously there's no guard on it, because we were using that secondary one. So what we're gonna do is just retract the needle, draw it out, and have a quick wipe down on the needle. And as you can see, quite a lot of thick paint on there. Okay, but the needle itself is clean. You haven't got any dried lumps and bumps and nasties on this. So we know it's now on the nozzle. Okay, so then all you do, unscrew the front end. Okay, and as you can see, or hopefully you can see, we have got, if I just drop this top camera down just a little bit for you, you can see we've actually got quite a, a lump of paint down in there, just like that. So what you can do is drag it along, and you can see nothing's coming out, all right? So that means this is thick, gooey, horrible paint down in here. Then hopefully you'll have a cleaning brush set if I can get that off of it. And a reamer. Okay, now normally you can buy these specifically for your own model, but they're quite handy. So this one here, what I'm going to do is just going to go in with the brush first and see. And all you can do, a couple of twists and pull out. And as you can see, it's very thick paint down there. And then the reamer is literally just a blade looking item. Slip this in, and immediately at the front end, you can see paint appearing. So the chances are, what this is, and there we go, you can see a large lump of thick paint. So there's two things that is, okay? First of all, it is either leftover residue from where you clean your airbrush. We put the thinners through it, hasn't been used for a few days, softened it up, pushed it all down and compacted um, on the actual nozzle point, or you actually had a lump in our paint, when that's basically, because it was an old jar, it could have been something from around the rim, fell in there, gravity, it was sunk to the bottom, and then as it was drawn through, immediately locked up on the end, okay? So it's either one of those two things, but it is always gonna be in your nozzle if you've got no paint coming out, okay? So what you wanna do is have a look down there, then we're just gonna take some airbrush cleaner, we're just gonna fill up the end, and then we're just gonna come in with a brush again, and we're just gonna give it a rub and a twist. And that's the handy thing about having the correct size brushes, then what you can do is refill this little guy up, take it over to your mat and drag it. And as you can see, you've got, well, hopefully you can see, color coming out 
And I look down through there, and I don't know how well you go. There you go. You can just about see a hole of light. That's good. That means we're clear, no problem at all. So then it should, and this is where the theoretically bit comes in, be fine. But before you put it in, just going to clean out this rear back chamber. So again, using our little cleaner here, we can insert it in and give it a rub. And what you're doing is you're not pushing it right the way up in the seals. We're literally just pushing it to here. Okay, give it a rub. And again, have a push it down and see what comes physically out, all right? Then we're just going to pop some cleaner in and look at all these bits falling out the end. That's never a good sign. So again, we're just going to go in there and re give it a wipe. Check in to see the color of what's coming out of it. Definitely looking better now. All right. And then I've got a little bit of paint build up on the front end. So good habit. Keep your airbrush nice and clean. Come in with a cotton bud just round around the threads on the front end. All right. And just in around the top here. Good quality cotton buds as well. Don't use the cheap nasty ones because what happens is the feathers, feathers, fibers, okay, can come off. But you might see all these bits on here. Uh, and then they get down near your needle and they can cause your needle to keep flowing, perhaps when you don't want it to. Okay, so there we go, good blow down, everything else. So then we can pop it together. So we've got the nozzle into the needle. Uh, sorry, the air cap onto the nozzle system. All right, then we can just drop the needle in the back. Popping that through. Pop our needle guard on the front, which is very sharp. Tiny little bit of airbrush cleaner in the top. And we're just trying to blow through. So we're just pumping the trigger just to make sure. And you might be able to see we've got bubbles appearing at the top here. This is because the front nozzle isn't on tight enough. Okay, so what we're going to do just going to retract the needle, push it through a few times. And you might see we've got little bits coming out still. So we're just flushing them through now. So what I'm going to do is put the color cup on the top. Okay, thinners. Okay, and you're looking to make sure you've got no bubbles coming up at the top, that's fine. So we're just going to pump the trigger. We draw the needle all the way through. As you can see, we've still got bits firing through down here. Just lots of pumping the trigger. And we've still got bits coming through. So this is just one of those times of when it all gets out. Okay, so we're just going to retract the needle again. And we're just pushing it up and down. Not pushing it right the way through. Just push it up and down. <coughs> Okay, because all you're doing is clearing that entire area because bits are falling forward now and you're just literally clearing out. Okay, so we just lock the needle back, pushing it. <coughs> needle goes down. Okay, and we've got paint and cleaner and everything coming through. So we're just continuously pumping it. <coughs> now you might find let me just um, dump that. All right. You might find sometimes you'll do that and still nothing happens. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so what you want to do, whip your needle out the back. Front end coming completely off. All right. And you want to have another look down here and give it a rub across the towel. And you can see the thinners coming out through the back. Okay. But you're looking down and we can't see any daylight. All right. So again... Grabbing your reamer, cleaning it off, pop the reamer down in there, and you can probably see you've got a little lump of paint coming down, and this is one of those secondary bits that's come down. Okay. Again, we can't see daylight down through there, so we put that in, I'm going to put the brush in. But people often talk about, obviously, paint not flowing through. Okay, and this is what it's all about. See, the lumps. We 
Okay, and if you haven't got a reamer, you can use your needle. Just don't push it overly forward. Just want to push it in. Okay, daylight down through there again. You can see. So what we can do, reassemble, and then hopefully this should be the last time. But all it is, it only takes a tiny bit of whatever to be down in there. And if that is the case, it's really going to affect your, your spraying. All right. And you should also notice when you're putting your needle in, it should have no resistance really at all flowing in. Obviously, you can feel the inner seals, but nothing really where you have to jam it through. All right. So we put the end on, a little bit more cleaner. And now we are fully in business. No problem at all. <clears throat> we are all good to go. Dumped a full color cup, you're in there. Now, this has now been standing, so what we should be able to do is pour it very slowly back in your color cup, but don't pour the very last bit because you might get the lumps and the nasties, which cause all those headaches as you were going through and in, all right? So we just move that out of the way. Then theoretically, if I just back the camera back up again, we should be in a situation where you check your flow. Nice flow. So there we go, we say airbrush. You know, you think it's clean, sometimes just that little bit extra makes all the difference. After that, this went down, no problem at all. As I said, I think I've beaten this one into submission now. Um, next week, early next week, I'm gonna get the camo work onto it. Then we can get it decal, we can get it weathered, uh, and then really we can go around and do all the detailing work and everything else like that for the final reveal at the end. So actually it's not that far off. Um, and I have to say, although it is a horrible kit to work with, once you have just bitten the bullet and get in there, get rescribing it, get re-riveting it, fix all the problems, actually it's not too bad. It's a nice looking Jaguar and it is better than the FX one, which has now been reboxed by Rebel, I think are kicking it out, because that truly is a nasty kit. It's a nasty fit, but the quality of the detail is actually pretty good on that one. So not too bad at all with those. This week we had two reviews go up. Um, I've got piles of reviewing to do. As I said, I know I show, I'm not gonna bother showing it anymore because the pile is growing massively. Um, but anyway, up this week, went up yesterday, we've got the Sabre Dog. Uh, this is a 132nd kit. Uh, have a look at that review. Actually, a Kitty Hawk really are getting there now. Each kit is getting better and better and better. And this one is an absolute beauty as well. And looking at the parts breakdown, we're gonna see lots of different versions of this one coming out. So, um, you know, really looking good. Okay, not quite as good, but the old Western Wessex. It's a red box. Um, they did uh, like the Humphrey one's got the different nose uh, and things like that. This has got the earlier front on it and all the rest of it. So it's basically it's the standard sort of Wessex Atari 148 kit with the new nose on it. Okay, the detail's not there and everything else, but actually it makes quite a nice kit once it's done. Seen loads of our members make great kits from this one. So again, little review on that one. We've also got coming up early next week, we've got the one on the G50, we've got one. Ben's actually got the Harvard, the Kitty Hawk 132nd Harvard, um, sorry, Texan, Texan Harvard's our version, uh, for the T6. Um, I reviewed that as well because he brought it down. So I've got piles of reviews and editing and everything else to get through. Plus the fact I've got still down there, I've got a BMP2, uh, sorry, a BMD2 to do, uh, 135th scale. I've got the Cylon uh, Raider to do. I've got cars, I've got some Gundam stuff, I've got F-18s, you name it, I've literally got kits coming out in my ears. Oh, well, down there that came in on delivery, I've got the new um, Hobby Boss Hawk, um, which is the Mark I, which looks like Hobby Boss are going back in time because they've made a huge error on it. Um, so I'll we'll be looking at that one and a couple of other kits and bits and pieces you can see down there. So still loads and loads for those things to come. Uh, next week we're going to have a good look around the forum and all the bits and pieces like that purely because obviously we've got the end for the prize draw coming up so I'm going to go right the way through all your work and everything on next week's show. So next up, can't put it off anymore, John, I should have actually, I should do a before and after really of this one but we've got a couple of pictures here of it. Um, this is his actually brilliant uh, KV-1. Well, all right, it's not now, but it was at the time. Okay, and the trouble is, because of the wind noise during the video that you're gonna see next for Destroy My Tank, it sounds like I say um, something along the lines about the quality of the work is shocking. 
What I mean by that was, because we were talking about it before, the quality of the work, because it's shocking that I'm going to destroy something that is actually a very nice kit. What I meant by it was, is will you stop sending us really good stuff and send us some of your tap? We, we, I was thinking more when we were starting this of doing things like your busters of this world, things that have really, really had it. And poor old my buster, you know, he's getting to that point now where he's really, coming adrift uh, and I don't think I can do much more with him so I might put, actually just half chuck him together and destroy him and send him out in a, a blaze of glory or something else like that because he really is you know feeling the pinch a little bit now but that's what I was expecting for you guys to send not really nice stuff you know that's the point and John's model here is an absolute gem um, unfortunately he's not anymore uh, so basically if you are going to send us one send us some more of your rubbish honestly that's what I was expecting I was not expecting to destroy very nice kits thank you for you guys that have sent them we've now got a pile I've got a box just over there uh, and that has got everything in there from the big old trucks I've got some luxury sports car thank you Jürgen for those uh, and I've got some other bits of pieces got some aircraft and that um, to do um, even Sid's donated his first ever kit Okay, that probably needs destroying because that's pretty shocking because he did use the paints that come, you know, the free ones. And it's like, whoop. Uh, but anyway, he, we're going to hang that up, I think, and obliterate that one. So, uh, but if you are planning on sending something, just make sure they're horrible kits or something you just really don't care about uh, and we'll quite happily destroy it. But a big thank you for John Buller for donating his one. Obviously, he's a friend of the site. He's been on the live shows and all the rest of it. And uh, we took great pleasure in knocking seven bells out of it with the Tiger. Uh, this is the 1 16th scale metal uh, BB firing Tiger and I must admit it's a little bit of editing uh, because uh, we used one of the air guns as well to uh, shoot this thing as well as the Tiger and then the Tiger has a drive over it and everything else. So without further ado, this is the sad farewell of destroying my tank of John Buller's KV-1. This week on Kill My Tank, we are here, myself, Sid and Ben, to take care of John's pride and joy, his KB1 tank, which he built last week, by the way. Apparently it's his first tank, which again, I we have to say, the quality of the models is a bit appalling. Luckily, you've brought some of yours. So yeah, yeah. It's all right now. Uh, but uh, for this one, what we're going to be doing is taking care of armour the only way that it should be. So we've got the KV-1 versus the Tiger. So without further ado... So this week on Destroying My Tank we have KV-1 built by John Buller versus Tiger. slightly bigger Tiger built by, well not me, I just repainted it a couple of weeks ago. Video is available on the site to watch. Goddamn tank! What the fuck is it? Hey! 12 o'clock, 800 yards! I see it, it's a goddamn tiger! Put some fucking smoke in his face! Yeah. Let's go, Granny, smoke up, Granny! Oh, on the way! We have to get to the crossroads, we gotta get past them. Donald, get the fuck out of here, let's go! Unless he drowns himself in his. <laughs>
model hopefully we've reenacted a battle somewhere and um, probably slightly different artistic popped off. it popped off the turret, the turret did come off did which we were thought were very, very good scary. and that was actually uh, Ben's marksmanship doing that one so well done to him thank you very much John for letting us destroy your model thank you John thank you we've Cheers. enjoyed it remember if you've got a model you'd like us to destroy just send it down and we'll do our best to totally obliterate it indeed. and uh, the next one I think we're doing some luxury sports cars we are indeed, we are yeah. indeed. so we've got some of those thank you Jürgen. yes definitely so um, thank you very much for joining us and thank we you. hope to see you again Catch soon you next time bye, bye. bye. So there we go, hope you enjoyed that one. Certainly gave the Tiger a workout. <laughs> it's like that, we went through two factories filming that one. Anyway, lots and lots of fun. Uh, next week, I say, luxury cars. Okay, so that's about it for this week. I'm gonna leave you with a great build. This is by Steve Timson. He's done the Snow Falcon, which is the Trumpeter 132nd uh, GR7 Harrier in the full snow camo and absolutely everything else like that. I thought it's quite epic because I'm doing the Jaguar at the moment. Absolutely love this build. So anyway, until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care. <laughs>